Hi everybody, the New Year's Day feature race at Santa Anita, race number eight. We're going five and a half furlongs on the turf. Let's take a look at the field for the grade two Joe Hernandez stakes. This is a really fascinating race because you have many horses turning back in distance that are question marks at this short sprint distance. And I think maybe we could look for a price perhaps in a race like this with a couple of other horses coming off of long layoffs. It's a big field. It is a good betting race according to the morning line. Your morning line favorite is the number nine Blitzkrieg, three to one who has not been seen since racing in the grade one gold cup at Santa Anita back on May the 27th. Let's take a look at the time form US pace projector. So key in these short sprint races. The number seven, Captain Scotty expected to make the lead. I get that. This horse has shown big speed in his recent races for trainer Peter Miller. This race is going to be his turf debut. And the three horse is also going to show some speed. That's Grinning Tiger, a horse that's yet to win on turf, but has done well on the surface in the past. I'd expect him to be forwardly placed. Let's begin the analysis with a real hard hitting horse, and that's the number one tribalist. He's nine years old. He's only started 14 times. He's obviously had his share of physical problems. When he's right, he is a very good turf sprinter. Stakes winner, graded stakes placed. I just wonder where he is from a form cycle standpoint. Time Form US has him in a beautiful spot. Saving ground behind the lead. He he was the beaten favorite last time out in the California flag, but this is a horse again on his best day can easily win a race like the Hernandez. He's 0 for 6 at Santa Anita. Perhaps his better races have come at Del Mar, but I think you have to respect this horse and he just looks like an overlay on his morning line price. The number two is double touch. He's one of those horses cutting back in distance. This time for John Sadler. They tried cutting him back in the Eddie D two starts back going from a mile to five furlongs and he ran okay. He made an inside bid on the far turn. He swung widest at the quarter pole. He finished well. He galloped out nicely like a horse that might appreciate more ground. They ran him in the lure stakes last time out. He faced a cracker jack field that included River Boyne who came back to run third in the grade two sea biscuit with a 97 buyer speed figure. This horse certainly classes up in a race like this but I am worried about him turning back that maybe the two double touch who we see pretty far back on your time form US pace projector might simply have too much work to do when the real running begins. Let's talk about Calbred grinning tiger getting blinkers for the first time figures to be close to the pace. I think he'll be sitting second. I agree completely with this time form US pace projector. Both of his races on turf have been good. I thought he ran okay in the California flag over this course and distance two starts back. He prompted the gate to wire winner Castle early. He took his shot at that horse all throughout the stretch drive. He just couldn't get by. But it was a solid performance. And he came out of that race. He ran on dirt going seven, distance a little far, dirt maybe. You know, not his game right now, considering that we saw that 93 on the turf two back. I like him going back to five and a half. I like his speed. Best of all, I like his price. Texas Wedge is the number four, and he's gonna projected to set a very good trip for trainer Peter Miller. The last time he ran on the turf, it was at Churchill Downs on November the 1st, going five furlongs. Got a nice ride from Brian Hernandez Jr. Saved ground on the turn in behind the leaders, angled three wide with a very sharp move turning into the stretch, and then he was able to grind down a really sharp horse, the runner-up who came back to win a nominers of two other than at Gulfstream with a 94 buyer speed figure. Texas Wedge's most recent start was on dirt. He ran to a good, solid dirt sprinter named Wilbo, was far from embarrassed in that race. I like the fact that he's lightly raced, might have a little bit of upside. We know that Miller does a great job with these turf sprinters. Texas Wedge probably going to work out a good sprint, uh, good trip in here. Wazo de Guerre, the number five at a three-race win streak, snapped most recently. That was in the Oakland stakes at Golden Gate Fields. We'll take a look at that race right now on the Tapita surface. Wazo de Guerre was the 8-5 to five favorite in that race. And he kind of finished up evenly, a solid enough third. I'm not sure that race has come back very strong. Wazo de Guerre earned an 89 buyer speed figure in that race. The question for me is class issues. We see Wazo de Guerre in the red hat, in the yellow silks, diving down towards the inside right now just couldn't make up any meaningful ground in the stretch, chasing a fast pace, but couldn't quite get there for second. Again, I didn't like the, the quality of competition compared to the horses he's gonna face here. I believe he's stepping up in class. 
turf. He has won for 15 lifetime. This is a horse that seemingly found himself over the tapita surface when Michael McCarthy shipped him up there over the summer. Wazo de Guerre, decent figs, decent form, has to prove himself on turf. True Valor, the number six, is a graded stakes winner that must be considered. He won the City of Hope Mile two starts back, altering course to the outside and just getting up late. That race good enough to earn him a spot in the Breeders' Cup Mile. He ran 10th. I think he had an excuse. Let's turn to the stretch of the Breeders' Cup Mile. He is in behind horses in the red silks. He sees a hole. He's going to try to split horses right now. It's just not going to work out, and he's got to be pinched back at a very key moment of this race. And against this caliber of horse, you don't get into trouble and then re-rally and hit the board from that juncture. True Valor, listen, that was a tough trip. You just draw a line through that race. Then you're left with two graded stakes wins, including the aforementioned 101 buyer in the City of Hope Mile. The Breeders' Cup Mile has already turned out to be an ultra-key race, with Got Stormy coming back to win the Matriarch with a 104 buyer, and the last place finisher coming back to win the graded Sea Biscuit with a 98 buyer. True Valor, on form, the horse to beat. Does he want to go five and a half furlongs? He's never gone this short in his career. He has not gone this short in North America. I wonder if he's just going to be out sprinted and make one run late. I think the connections are using this perhaps as a prep race for something on the Saudi Cup undercard. True Valor might find this distance a little bit short. Captain Scotty, speed of the race. Good form on dirt, second start off a long layup. Something tells me Peter Miller used the last race on dirt at Churchill Downs as a prep for this, with this race in mind, perhaps all along. He showed good speed, he tired. If you go deep in this family, you've got a lot of turf influences. Up close, not so much. Quality Road's a decent enough turf sire. 11% winners with first-time turf runners, but the dam went 0 for 2 on the turf. She has full two turf runners. None of them have won. The last race on dirt was good in the fact that they finished directly ahead of a horse that came back to win the Bonapaw stakes off the turf race at fairgrounds with a 96 buyer speed figure. Gotta respect this horse's speed. Just wish he had a little bit more turf pedigree in the immediate family. Legends of War was just overmatched in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint most recently. Uh, the third place finisher, Shecky Shabazz, that day came back to win the Claiming Crown Canterbury with a 100 buyer speed figure. Two starts back, Legends of War pulled off a big upset in the grade three Franklin Simpson stakes. 99 buyer at Kentucky Downs, but going six and a half furlongs. He's capable at the five and a half. He's got tactical speed. He has that one fig at Kentucky Downs that makes him a contender. And yet it just looks like an outlier. All all the other races between uh, buyers of 74 89 might be a little bit light. Blitzkrieg is your morning line favorite. Let's go back to Blitzkrieg's most recent race on turf. It was the San Francisco Mile, a grade three at Golden Gate. It capped off a four race win streak. He got right up close to a slow pace. He made the lead turning into the stretch. We'll see him hop back to his left lead once he passes the gap here, but he beat a good field. River Boyne, the runner up, coming back to run second in the grade one Shoemaker Mile with a 99 buyer. I think if they had to do it all over again, they wouldn't have run this horse in the Gold Cup at Santa Anita on the dirt, stretching them all the way out to a mile and a quarter, facing such tough dirt horses like Vino Rosso and Gift Box, and that race just preceded a very, very long layoff. Blitzkrieg looked like the kind of horse that would have become a downhill turf specialist, going six and a half furlongs at Santa Anita. That course is not in use right now. Five and a half, off the long layoff, now we've got some questions. Fitness and distance. He may want a little bit more than five and a half. And if he's the favorite in this race, I might want to take a chance against him. Completing this field is Carnivorous. So we're going to go back to Carnivorous's most recent race. An $80,000 optional claimer. He does some good things. He's in the redum colors and the purple hat in behind horses. He's got nowhere to go. Abel Cedillo does not panic. He eases this horse. He's moving sideways while everybody else is moving uh, ahead. It does not bother this horse at all because once he gets to the clear under a hand ride, he rolls by them all to win. Buyer was a little light. He was against weaker competition. Earned an 87 buyer. Was claimed out of that race by Steve Knapp. Now, this horse was listed as a vet scratch on November the 9th. He may be the kind of horse that needs a little bit of pace to set up his late kick. I'm not sure the pace will be blazing. Timeform US does not have it as a red bar scenario. I think he might need a little bit more pace as he steps up in class. As I said in the open, I kind of want to price in this race, and maybe this horse is a bit outclassed, but as we take a look at my top picks in here, I think Grinning Tiger is going to work out a good trip. 
He sat second last time out. He couldn't reel in the leader. Now he gets blinkers. The horse he's going to be chasing is questionable switching surfaces for the first time. Maybe grinning Tiger at a big price gets the jump on some of these horses turning into the stretch and is able to hold sway. I would want to use several horses in multiple race wagers. I picked Blitzkrieg second, but I kind of like him best on the bottom of single race exotics. I would like to use Texas Wedge. I think Texas Wedge is the kind of horse that certainly could work out a good trip going five and a half. And I think True Valor, even though he hasn't sprinted at this distance, his class and his speed figures certainly make him a strong contender. So I would go three, four, six in multis, three, nine, four, six from a single race perspective, and taking a shot, a little bit of a shot with the Calbred, the three, Grinning Tiger, and the grade two Joe Hernandez stakes on New Year's Day at the Great Race Place. It has an approximate post time of three o'clock Pacific. Good luck.